getting your drink on. Drink Dude, off. you can't do you that. Know why? We're going live. I need uh I need caffeine to get me through. Oh, really? Today today's episode is brought to you by Diet Mountain Dew, not regular Mountain is- Dew, which is awful. Uh Diet Mountain Dew is the drink of choice here at Babylon 5 for the first time. Well, and that your part of water. Babylon 5 for the first time. Do what now? That's it's the drink of choice for your side of Babylon 5 for the first time. Yes, yes it's it's my side. Uh uh, I I cannot explain why I truly prefer Diet Mountain Dew. Like I, I somebody hit me with a regular Mountain Dew at a restaurant the other day, and I was like, nope, can't do it. Because really? it, it, so I, anything I don't drink I don't drink sugar. Mm-hmm. Despite, despite all appearances, I do not drink sugar. It's water, uh, sugarless teas, sugarless coffee. I, oh, I don't drink coffee, but if I drunk drink coffee, it'd be sugarless coffee. I don't drink coffee. I really don't drink a whole I, lot of teas either. Le- I, I do lemonades, but coffee. it's it's all the the sugarless stuff. And I don't know people are like aspartame, and I'm like, I yeah, I, I I had a regular lemonade the other day, like yeah, you know what I mean, like squeeze the lemon and mix the water and yeah. put the sugar in, and I I mean it about knocked me over. I was like, oh, really, yeah. yeah. So anyway, uh, Diet Mountain Dew is is and yeah, that's uh, you soda. can send the check to our paypal account at babylon right. five first the number five and the word first <laughs> yeah i don't do soda at all i just uh my kids don't, when i was and it freaks them out every time somebody tries like a neighbor kid comes over with soda or something like that it's like oh yeah yeah i uh when i worked at the movie theater and we cleaned our lines uh-huh. um that was the last time i ever drank soda and for any of you out there who've worked in a restaurant and cleaned your lines before, one, bully on you if you've actually cleaned your soda lines. Cause, uh, <laughs> and then once you do, if, if you've gone back and drank soda, then, well, yeah, maybe you didn't watch what came out of those things. <sighs> Listen, I just prefer to sit there and go. It's like making a hot dog, eating a hot dog. Mm. Don't tell me what's in it. Just let me sit here and enjoy it. They're amazing. I love hot dogs. <laughs> hey, Jeff. Oh my. It's two and a half minutes and you guys have even let's do a hot dog oh. podcast. Like I'm down. I'm let's do this. Let's do the Hebrew National versus Nathan's debate right here, Ooh. right now. Ooh. Ooh. I I'm a Nathan's guy. Hebrew I'm National. a Nathan's guy. So although I could be I could be convinced for Hebrews National. I mean, that's a well, to be clear, I'm not going to say no to the only ter- hot dog I'll say no to is a tofu dog because that is uh, that's just not right. You know where they have the best hot dogs right. in the world, hmm. or at least for a while they were they were honestly the best. Casey's Corner in the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World. Really, just, just a good hot dog on a bun. But in the, this was before they had Nathan's. This was before they outsourced it. I don't know who they were getting them from, uh, but they were. I mean, they were fat, they were juicy, they were they were delicious. Mm. Oh, so good, so good. Love love a good hot dog. Jeff, we're here to talk about Babylon 5, though. Now I'm hungry. I know. Now, now you've got me hungry. Jeez, man. So if you're watching on YouTube, you might have just seen a skip. Uh, that's because we actually went and ate a bunch of hot dogs. Now we came back. <laughs> our, our promise of never editing. Wait for it. Oh, wait, 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 Jeff, I got a better way to cover it. I got a better way to cover it. So for you. We are here to talk about Babylon 5. We're here for the first time. Jeff and I have just watched season four, episode 12, Conflicts of Interest for the very first time. We are here to talk about it. We are recording a podcast for our audio feed out there. And... To those of you who are listening to the full unedited audio version of this, hello to you guys out there. You guys here at YouTube are going to see or listen to out there on the audio world, uh, the full unedited, this is how we made the show. This is the behind the scenes. This is how the hot dog is grilled. This is how the hot dog is boiled. There you go. This is how the hot dog is microwaved. Mm -hmm. This is how the hot dog is added macaroni and cheese. Yeah. This is how the ketchup gets put on the hot dog. Yeah. This is how when you're out of buns, you just go grab a piece of white bread and you wrap yeah. that around your hot dog. That's 
how what we're doing here and uh that means you guys get all the outtakes the rabbit trails you get all the the funny stuff that happens the not so funny stuff that happens and when jet when jeff or brent inevitably one of us have to get up and go somewhere because of family stuff the other one just gets to sit here and look like an idiot and vamp while the other right. one has to come back uh so with that you guys listen like share comment all that sort of stuff please stay spoiler free please share this video out there if you like what we do here you guys are awesome and jeff real quick shameless plug for those of you here on youtube uh did you know over at our patreon page you can catch brent and jeff doing full unedited reactions to videos each and every single week just throwing it out there you guys want that content it's there Go check it out over at patreon.com slash B5 first. Babylon, Babylon 5 first. Number five, the word. That's it right there. And uh, you guys can do that. Jeff, let's hit that button and go because it's six minutes in and we haven't started the episode yet. You are valued and you are needed. You will be emperor. I think you're about to go well. Everyone has gone before. The year is 2023. The name of the podcast, Babylon 5, for the first time. Welcome to Babylon 5 for the first time, not a Star Trek podcast. My name is Jeff Aiken, and I am the one who was. Uh, uh, Hi, Brent Allen, and I'm the one who will be. Sorry to uh, interrupt you there, but you know what? We're watching Babylon 5 for the first time for you, the one who is. Yeah, that's right. Jeff and I are uh, two veteran Star Trek podcasters watching this show for the first time. Uh, But we're doing that thing that we do as Star Trek podcasters where we're searching out. I mean, Jeff, we are peeling back layers. We are looking around corners. We're, We're shining light into the darkness looking for messages that this show is trying to tell us and trying to tell us it in a uniquely Babylon five way. Sometimes we win, sometimes we fail, but here we are every single week searching for those messages. And as we search for those messages, we need to remind ourselves this is not a Star Trek podcast. So we only get up to no more than three references a piece to Star Trek each episode. That's it. Three. One of those three. No substitutions, exchanges, a refund. I would like to brighten your day a little bit, Brent. Would you? Is that something I can do for you? Yes, you can. But as you do that, I'm going to talk to the YouTube folks here just for a sec. They might have just seen me smell my fingers. And I, I, I'm sorry. <laughs> it looks so weird. You know what it is? I because I I have to just shout it out. I have a bottle of lavender essential oil on my hands, and it's like like dripping a little bit around the edge, or like there's a little bit dried. And I was I was trying to see like is that? It, yep, that's 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 the lavender smell. It was not that. It wasn't anything else. I'm not trying to be weird. I just had to. Shout that out for you folks here. <laughs> oh, wow. Listen, All right. Get the unedited version. Here we go. There's nowhere to go but up. Like, <laughs> this is going to be great. Got to feel content somehow, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as if we had an episode here with not much to talk about. And so we, you know, slipped in scenes of other cartoons and stuff. Hey, uh, can I do something to brighten your day a little bit? I here, would Brett? love for you to, Jeff, please. Make me wake me up a little bit. Give me a so I've something. So I've got a five star review. Oh, yes. This is from Apple Podcasts. It's from Troll Dan, and it might be the shortest review in the history of Apple Podcasts. Good show. Show is good, even when the hosts are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> that is, there you, you go. Know what? That is our aim. To be wrong, but be good. And let everybody laugh along with us and sometimes at us. Yeah. And we're perfectly okay with that. Yeah. Totally okay. All right. We have another five-star review. 
Oh, yes. Also from Apple Podcasts, Sacralus says, Hi, guys. Greetings from Europe. First of all, I want to apologize for my poor English. It is not my first language. I'm a huge fan of B5, and I really appreciate the work that you've put into this podcast. I watch you on YouTube, too. Your analysis of the show so far is amazing. Keep up the great work, and the best is yet to come. Listen, your English was perfectly fine. No Top need notch. to apologize. The, if I didn't know that you didn't speak English as your first language, I would not have even had that as a blip on my radar. Um, thanks for listening. And shout out to all of our international folks. Jeff is a huge percentage of our listeners. Like, so huge. This, this is going back a couple, a, a, a little bit of time, but we, you know, so some fun inside information for, for people. We have advertisers that reach out to us. And you're going to notice that outside of on the YouTube side, um, them doing their advertising thing, we don't really do a lot of that kind of stuff. We try and keep pretty clean product for you or anything we do do we wanted to add value to you as a as a as a viewer would, or a listener i would just need to call time out and say that you just said do 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 <laughs> i did i did do the do i am a parent of an 11 year old just for the record and we're both mentally about 12 so it all fits <laughs> that's why he and i get along so well <laughs> yeah but yeah so they asked us for some metrics you know stats on our audience and at the time 46% of our audience was U.S. based. 46 was U.S. based. U.S. Yeah. 54 was international. That's yeah. awesome. It's, pretty, it's amazing. That's I love it so, so much. Cool. Amazing. So I'm sorry about all the times we talk about things going on in the United States and you're like, oh, that was crazy. Like mm -hmm. those guys. Wow. Right? That's so sorry. <laughs> Well, Jeff, uh, that did brighten my day. Yes. That did brighten my day. Maybe what's coming up next, though, depending on how it goes, may actually dampen your day. Because hmm. this is where you got to go where you're right or where you're wrong, and you got to fess up. This is the part of the show where we look back on what we did last week where we predicted what this episode was going to be about, and it's time to pay the piper to see how close you were or how miserably far away you might have been. Jeff, oh, one who was, what did you think this episode was going to be about and how close were you? I'm going to give myself more points on this that I deserve, and I'll explain why. Here's what I thought. I thought that we were going to be starting the Voices of Resistance stuff, and that kind of going out into the world was going to ping Ivanova's former lover and big time home guard guy, Malcolm Biggs. Mm -hmm. Now, that part didn't happen at all, but let me strip away all the names and all the specifics and just say that we're, and just say that we're going to have uh, stuff going out into the into the galaxy and having a callback to a season one love interest for someone coming back into the show, and I nailed it. Wrong no? people. <laughs> yeah. Wrong people, wrong situation, and kind of the wrong outcome. But you know, it was a callback to uh to uh to a season season one love interest. Brent, how did you do on this one? I said that this was going to be Mars resistance and smugglers trying to figure out if they really wanted to be a part of this new alliance that Sheridan is forming. No points on that. I did say, though, however, that this would also be Garibaldi trying to figure out where he belongs, which ultimately was the Garibaldi plotline of this episode. Yep. So okay. half point. Together, we nailed it. <laughs> there you go. Depending on how my, you do the math. My all powers combined. <laughs> Well, Brent, for those that it might have been a while since they've seen this or they simply haven't watched it at all but are watching or listening to us anyway, why don't you tell us about conflicts of interest? Well, it looks like Jeff is finally going to get his wish because this one sure seems to be a lot about Garibaldi. We open with him conducting business when a client walks in all miffed that Garibaldi hasn't done what he said he was going to do which is to rescue the client's daughter. Garibaldi smiles snarkily and sort of lets him go on for a bit until he says, hey, turn around. And there she is, the man's daughter. 
So mission accomplished. And to top it all off, Garibaldi is only going to charge the guy like one third of his normal fee. So listen, despite everything that's happened, Garibaldi's still a good guy, right? Right? Well, while he's doing that, he's being peeped at by those shady dudes who recruited him in the last episode. They have a mission for him. This is going to kind of be a test. And if he passes, then he's proved himself. And if he doesn't, eh, then he's dead and we don't really care. Which means it's a perfect time for Sheridan to order Zach to clean up some old business because you see Garibaldi has yet to turn in his badge and his gun, or I'm sorry, his identicard and his PPG, or also his backup PPG. Garibaldi's a little miffed and takes a cheap shot at Zach for being the one to come and take it. But what Zach doesn't know is Garibaldi has a backup identicard. That is until Garibaldi uses his backup identicard and it flags for Zach, who then turns around and deactivates the backup card because really, would it have been too much trouble to deactivate the card like as soon as Garibaldi resigned, whether he still had it in his possession or not? Well, unfortunately, that little act is going to leave Garibaldi in the lurch when he's caught between a rock and a hard place while he's on this mission, which also happens to include his old girlfriend from Mars, Lise Hampton, now Lise Hampton Edgars, like Edgar Eggers. Edgar Eggers? Yes, Edgar Eggers. Like richest man on earth, dumb Eggers? Yeah, that guy is his old girlfriend's new husband. Well, because he's actually really good at his job, Garibaldi, of course, is going to get them out of the situation. He's going to send Lise on her way, and he's later going to lambast, and he's later going to lamb blast Sheridan for having the audacity to deactivate his backup identity card that he shouldn't have even had in the first place. Like he's actually blaming Sheridan for the three dead bodies that he had to leave behind. Oh, and what was it that those three dead bodies were after while they were still alive? Well, Lise was there to obtain a new piece of biotech that has something to do with researching a possible genetic flaw in telepaths. You know, nothing major, but I'm sure we're eventually going to come back to this. Well, while all of that is happening, Ivanova is busy getting the new television studio up and running for the voice of the resistance. And she sits there and says, well, it's all ready to go, Captain, except she just kind of do it. She doesn't have enough power. <laughs> so she takes a trip to Epsilon 3 hoping to get Drawl to help her with the power needs to transmit all the way back to Earth. And Epsilon 3 has got enough power to make them transmit all the way beyond the rim to where, you know, Kosh 2.0 Electric Boogaloo is going to be able to hear this stuff. Only the problem is, is Drawl is kind of busy, so she meets up with none other than Zathras. And Ivanova is like, hey, Zathras, what are you doing here? And Zathras is like, Zathras live here. Zathras work here. What is it you are doing here? And Ivana was like, didn't we send you back to the future? I mean, to the past, like to good old 1885. And Zathras was like, no, I never went to past. You must mean Zathras, not Zathras. Zathras has never been to past, nor has Zathras or Zathras or Zathras or Zathras or Zathras or Zathras or Zathras. But Zathras, now he did get sent to past and he's still there. But Zathras has never been to the past. And Ivanova's brain exploded. No worries, though, because Zathras helps her, and she sends out her very first broadcast as the new voice of the Resistance, making it super clear that they are not against Earth. They love Earth, but they are standing against Clark and his people and whatever they're up to. That's it. Jeff, what was your reaction like to this episode, Conflicts of Interest? This episode had a lot of really great moments in it, for sure. That sounds familiar. It does, I feel doesn't like it? we've had this conversation before, Jeff. Yeah, it's ringing pretty true, but, but, but these moments were great. I love the callback to Lise. I love that she came back. We met her in A Voice in the Wilderness Part 2 and Garibaldi, and that was great. Like for real, you know, she's like, oh, 
I'm I am current I am uh Lise Hampton and I am currently being pumped up by Franz and uh <laughs> and Garibaldi was like cool cool good for you click oh my gosh I can't believe this this is the worst thing ever but he was cool about it this one he's like hey uh <laughs> What am I? Like you've had some bad stuff happen. I I this this was a roller coaster ride episode for Garibaldi. Right. So I loved him reuniting dude and his daughter and un, and undercharging him. That was that's the Garibaldi I loved, right? Garibaldi was my favorite character in season one. And it's stuff like this that made me love him. Mm. I hated him making it personal with Zach. I loved him being honest with his feelings about his feelings with Lise, yeah. but I hated him blatantly violating rules and regs that he knows well. Sure. I loved him being incredible at his job. Honestly, I kind of don't care about him and Sheridan so much anymore. No. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like at the end of the episode, when he gets the, you know, spoiler alert, he gets the job offer. I want him to go just go to Mars and work with the guy who's sleeping with your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> Like, it's awkward, it's weird, but it's going to be great, dude. Go do your thing. Yeah. I love, love that we got Londo and Jakar in a room together. It felt right. Mm -hmm. Felt good. Uh, I loved Zathras. Mm -hmm. I didn't much care for Zathras, but I loved Zathras. Mm. And my final thought, that little, like, Pattern screen, the logo thing they have for the Voices of Resistance is the dumbest possible logo of all time. Captain Captain Clark, <laughs> President Clark with a line through his face. Really? Did are they like, hey, hey, Garibaldi? You know that guy whose daughter you, the, the, the daughter you rescued the daughter? Yeah, does she have like like a nine year old sister that could draw our logo for us? <laughs> like, just tell her what we're doing, and yeah, we'll put it up. It'll be fine. Right. Ah. What about you? How did you feel about this one after you watched it the first time? Well, I liked this episode. I want to go on record. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that there is an actual episode of season four that I have disliked yet. You know, like I, I have, yeah, I think agreed. I've actually liked these episodes. I actually liked this episode a lot more than I did the one from last week, but I find myself coming out with two main reactions. The first one is, yep, that all just happened. And two, Zathras! Zathras! Yeah. Hey, listen, I'm not going to poo-poo this episode. Honestly, though, I just didn't have much of a reaction at all. It was very... Okay. There we go. Of And I, I, I have a... I'm beginning to wonder something. I feel like I'm wondering stuff every week these days. Mm -hmm. Is it possible that the reason for this right now, because I want to reiterate, there hasn't been an episode in the season that I haven't liked yet, but I haven't had much of a response to a lot of them yet. That's fair. You know I what I mean? Mm -hmm. Especially since the Vorlon shadow stuff ended, right? Um, is it possible that JMS is such a masterful storyteller that he has set everything up so perfectly and put it in place in such a way that events are now unfolding in this part of the story where your response is, well, of course that's what happens. Of course that's how it comes to be. Yep, kind of. I kind of expected Lise to come back into the story at some point. Did I know how? No, but I certainly expected her to come back into it. Of course Garibaldi's gonna get taken, he needs to get taken off the station. Yeah. The best thing that can happen to Garibaldi right now is he leaves Babylon 5, goes and does his job somewhere else, and he just decides his policy is going to be, I'm not talking about Sheridan, and I'm not talking about Babylon 5. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm going to go live my life and do my thing. That is the best thing he could do right now. Um, but I, I really wonder if it's not that. Like, like, is it JMS's fault for just being so good? Right. That we're like, okay, cool. What happens next? Yeah. Where are we going next? Now, all of that said, the big exception here is Zathras. Because Zathras, Jeff, is like the Spanish Inquisition. No one expects the Zathras. <laughs> it's 
It's true. And it's great every time he shows up. I hope this is not his last show on Babylon 5. I feel like two, because I mean, there are two, but it turned into three ways they could have done that whole scene. Mm -hmm. There's the way they could have done it where they showed Ivanova flying down to the planet and then later showed her flying back and she's like, yep, got everything set up. Mm -hmm. And honestly, that would work, Mm -hmm. right? Because we know what's on Epsilon 3. All the math checks out. So, okay, could have done that. Talked with Drawl. He wasn't available to come in and shoot the scene this week, but we're all good. He's going to give us power. Let's go. Yeah, that's what I almost feel it was. They originally had this. I'm like, yeah, let's have her go down. They can, Ivanova and Drawl can have another moment. You know, and they'll call back to season three. It'll be great. And then Because you know what should happen at the end of this? Draw something should happen to draw and Ivanova is the one who goes down to take over like with her like latent telepath abilities and whatnot like that's how she ends up is as the battery can I give you my dark prediction though of why that will never happen because Sheridan's gonna die and Ivanova's gonna take over the ruling the station worse Uh oh Ivanova's gonna die Ivanova's gonna get that telepath virus genetic thing like she's Uh gonna be the like the catalyst that makes this real for Garibaldi. Is she gonna be the is she gonna be the Odo who like also has the cure and it comes out of her blood? Or is Ooh. she dead? That's number two. All right. That was quick. Maybe. I don't know. Honestly, if I if I was JMS doing this, I'd kill her. Make it big. You know, I mean I don't want her I am not saying I do I do not want Ivanova to go away. I I want my season and a half more. Yeah of Susan, uh, Susan Ivanova, yeah. but, but like, if you want to want to make this a thing, cause I loved Garibaldi with that cue or that thing or whatever it was. And yo, yo, your humanitarian husband, bleh, bleh, bleh. but then the second Ivanova gets it, he's, he's on it. Right. And it's very real because since season one, Garibaldi and Ivanova should be a thing. No, nope. <laughs> I, I will die on that. I will die on this. hill. <laughs> Garibaldi and Ivanova are the same as Sheridan and Ivanova last episode, where she's like, I'm not into you, you're not into me, but for goodness sakes, tell me I look good sometime, you know? That's that's what buddies do. That's that's, that's Ivanova and Garibaldi. They're buddies. All right, fair enough. But yeah, so draw, hey, dude's not around and available. Well, hey, let's see. Let's see if that Tom Choke guy's around. If he's, if he's, we can, we can do a Zathras. Because we can't do Zathras. Right, here's the thing. Zath, this didn't need to be Zathras. There was no, no particular point to have Zathras in here, except for pure, we love Zathras. Let's put him in his fan service. That's, that's it really, right? I have one theory though, because he was Zathras through and through. And I feel like they added the whole, there's 10 of us. Well, nine now. Yeah. Whatever thing, just you know, because we've we've seen Zathrases around. Like, Whatever, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, but this Zathras did the same thing in the past. Zathras did, which was talk about how Zathras is a beast of burden. Oh sure, you know, I like the dirt yes. and all this. Zathras poor... is used to people walking on him. <laughs> yep, <laughs> you get used to it. As I thought, maybe here you go. Maybe I'm looking at you, Red Sector here. Maybe for Brent. There will be a redemption of Zathras. Stop it. Stop where he it. gets a sock. He gets a sock. <laughs> and then he's free. <laughs> Zathras is a free elf. Um, I have to tell you something about this, though, Jeff. Yeah. When I first saw Zathras, I was like, woohoo, Zathras. And then he's talking. Zathras seemed a little different to me here. And the yeah. voice didn't seem quite right. And the makeup didn't seem to fit the face of the actor that was underneath. And I really sat back and went, is this even the same actor? Did they get go get somebody else who could impersonate the voice a little bit and then oh, wow. try to put the prosthetics on? And because he just seemed off. He just seemed a little different. I looked it up. No, it's the same actor. It really is. It's it's the same yeah. dude doing the same thing. But this this Zathras did seem a little off and i don't know if that's intentional on the part of jms to show that actually these are different zathra Zath- size zathrai zathrai okay um <laughs> or if it's as he has written a handful of you know things for zathras i.e the thing where he's so self-defeating right uh that he's inserting more of that into play it up because the character is growing as he's writing. I, I'm not sure which one it is, but uh, I think it's less, less malignant than either of those things. I think it's literally, uh, we want to draw 
for this scene. He wasn't available. Mm. Uh, uh, dude, can you be here next week and do Zathras again for us? Hey, uh, costume and makeup department, can you dust off all that those prosthetics? Oh, we, we have those tucked away. <laughs> they hurry with a couple days' notice and they and they put it together. There again. you go. And that's Mike had a had a phenomenal scene. It was a one day yeah. shoot for for Tim Chicoite or whatever his name was, and there we go. It was great. It was it was fun though. It was it was the highlight of the episode. And then we got Sheridan trying to offer his uh, services out there. Cool. I yeah. We'll see what happens with that in a future episode. I'm sure. He yeah. said a thing. Yeah. I think for me, there were two things that happened in that scene. Well, one, Londo and Jakar were in a room yes. together, and that was great. And they were, and I they loved... were speaking civilly with each yeah. other. They agreed. Yeah. Even. And from from an agreement, as small as that, great things can come and grow. Sure. But the two things I got were uh, the Centauri know about the Drach, and they, it's oh, yeah. like a children's story to scare scare kids to sleep or whatever. And the second thing was Sheridan's incredible statement that it's easy to come together against a common enemy, but now we have to come together for a common goal. And so that community building that Delenn was talking about last week, he's putting into action. It really hit me how we were seeing that in action where you got a Centauri, you have a Narn, both of whom would not hesitate to completely eviscerate and murder the other one, given just a, any opening whatsoever. And Sheridan standing be between them, just seeing like, guys, we got to come together. There's bigger stuff than any of us. And he was making a very compelling argument. Now, I wasn't clear at the end if they agreed or didn't agree to let the Rangers and the White Stars go and patrol their space for the Drock. I wasn't clear on the outcome of that. But they listened. And that's a big deal. That's Sheridan being awesome. I dig it. That's good. Then we've got Garibaldi and Rammstein again. Rammstein <laughs> wanting him to do some work. Yeah, oh, the, the guys in the leather outfits. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, it, listen, they come in. I, I like that opening. Look, he'll go do it, and he'll either do it well or he'll die, in which case we don't care. We're yeah. Good. Um. I got to tell you, you mentioned liking to see Lise and having this come back. I cared absolutely nothing for it. Really? And by that, I'm not saying I hated it. I'm saying I literally had zero emotional connection to this. They could have brought in a complete stranger. It could have been her. It could have been Liana Kemmer. I, it did not move the needle for me whatsoever. In fact, I might have really liked it much better if it had been Liana Kemmer. <laughs> you know, old Uncle Mike is coming back to the rescue. You know what I mean? Um, the scene that I the scene I loved between the two of them would have worked with Kemmer. Yeah. Uh, well, not as much, but because it, it was it was when they were in his quarters, mm -hmm. and he's like, "So you had all this bad stuff. Franz went off and cheated on you, and you were lost. You you haven't seen your daughter in a year, and you never called. You never anything." And he's like, "Look, we're done. We're done. I'm going to do this job, and and we're out of here." You're not a part of my life anymore, and I'm going to move on and do great things. And you know what? I don't even need to drink to make that happen anymore. Brett, this is powerful stuff right here. All the stuff leading up to it was kind of, yeah, <laughs> little whatever. But then he's like, I can feel good about this, yeah. and I don't have to drink to do that. And the that was, actor. And I did like that part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the actor, what she said, everything was so, like, she was truly happy for him yeah. in that moment. And to me, that that was a maybe the highest point emotionally in uh, in this episode where it's just like there are people that truly care about you michael like i'm i'm glad you got out of that that so i'm going to amend what i'm getting ready to say here what my note okay. says is this i seriously hope that this is just serving the purpose of connecting garibaldi to edgar's for whatever work he's going to be doing what I do not want to see is Garibaldi and Lise try to have a thing together. I do not want to see her having an affair with Garibaldi on her husband. I do not want to see uh, them falling in love and then something happens to her husband and now Garibaldi's coming in to take over because he's going to, I don't want to see any of that. Just I'm okay if she really doesn't show back up and it's really Garibaldi and Edgar's going forward because I'm interested in this Edgar's guy. Like yeah. I think this could be an interesting piece. Um, I hope they stay connected, Lee. I like I like Lee. So, but oh, but I agree with you. But 
I could be down for Garibaldi and Lease together in a more platonic relationship mm -hmm. and something that is that is good for Garibaldi to yes. realize because Garibaldi is a very bitter man right now. Yeah. He's very bitter. And that that is what I want to see them explore right now. You know what I mean? Like they're stringing out this Garibaldi's just pissed off doing his own thing a long time right now. We need to get to okay, what happened to Garibaldi in that chamber with the Psycor folk? What did he what happened when he looked in that mirror and they like yeah. winter soldiered this dude and he's like erase all of that to where he like they are slow playing this slower than they did to Lynn and John Sheridan coming together as an item. You know what I mean? And I need them to, you know, get that. That's, that's the Garibaldi story I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. The idea that Garibaldi learns and recognizes that there are people who truly care about him. And you know who some of those people are Sheridan and Ivanova and Zach uh -huh. and Steven and, so on and so forth. You yeah, know? Zach was great for him in this episode. He needs he to come back and apologize friend. to Zach. He really yeah. does because that was that was awful of Garibaldi to do that to him and lay that on him and put a guilt trip on him that just yeah. is completely unfair. And I'm just going. I hope that's not true, Garibaldi. I hope that's whatever the programming is, is programming is going on. Um, but I could I could get with Lise being there if it served that purpose for Garibaldi. Yeah. I almost see him being like the contracted or even whatever had a secure corporate security now yep. for this Edgar industries or whatever. And maybe he reports to lease, you know, or something, but they, they, they form that, that supportive relationship. I'd be okay something. seeing her being like some big powerful executive in this company. Yeah. You know, like the like board kind of a, thing. A, a strong female character that's outside of the, the military command chain. And frankly, in the parlance of Babylon 5, not only a strong female character, but also a strong female Martian-born character, mm -hmm. which I think translates into our world here. You know, So I can be a woman on a board who might be an immigrant you know, or something like that, but look, I'm powerful, I'm brilliant, and I'm doing these great things. I think there's a, the potential for some really great um, analogies down the road. If this goes anywhere, right? This, this could just be another job for him and this was a way to pull him into the job i like it jeff the biggest question to me the biggest thing coming out of this um because i'll say this i've liked all of these episodes um i haven't had much of a reaction to all of these episodes but i will say this i think every single one of these episodes is important i don't think any one of these is a throwaway episode like to get wherever we're going at the end of the season or in season we five, need we need what's happening here. Like I, I I'm yeah. recognizing that the thing out of this episode that we need, and you referenced it earlier, whatever this genetic flaw is in the telepaths, whatever this potential virus is with telepaths and what that's going to do, because we still have that stack of frozen telepaths in the back over there. Yep. We've still got Bester and his folks out there doing whatever they got going on. And remember that one uh, telepath dude was like, hey, uh, President Clark's trying to do this multi-pronged attack and we're going to use some of our telepath friends too. Like, I'm interested to find out where this piece goes because it really does sound like a virus that's going to uh, yep. come in and infect the whole. <laughs> that could be rough. I found it fascinating too, like the uh, the telepaths who came to disrupt that whole deal had the uh, cyanide tooth mm -hmm. thing. Now, for all of you out there who are not have not are not married or you're uh you know you're not the 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 groom in the or the husband in the relationship, I'm going to let you in on a secret. And I might get in trouble for this. I'm taking a pretty big risk sharing this brand. Mm -hmm. Just uh if I go disappearing, you know that they the brotherhood got upset and found out about this, but after you get married, they install this thing in your in your tooth so that at some point in your marriage, you're going to come stumbling through the door, maybe a little drunk, maybe a little whatever, and your wife's going to be like, oh my God, again? Where have you been? What were you doing? I don't understand why. And all you got to do, 
Let's flick that thing open, bite down, and done. You're done. So problem solved. These telepaths wasted their their groomed husband cyanide teeth to stop from getting captured by the highly competent and effective Zach and Zach security crew, who even with all of the help and everything else from everybody, still uh, beat beat Garibaldi to the to the punch. Mm -hmm. That was pretty cool. My big question. Mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test your knowledge here a little bit. So they have these military issue PPGs. Jeff, are you, are you sure you want to test my knowledge? I am sure. You've tried this before a while ago. I am testing your knowledge because I know that you know this. Okay. And I'm just, it's, trust me. Trust me. Right. Come along for the ride. I'm with you. Come along for the ride. They have these military issue PPGs on uh, the station. Why do they have PPGs and not like projectile weapons or lasers? Um, I'm pretty sure that PPGs have been established to be projectile weapons and not energy based weapons. Well, I mean like they don't have like, like bullet gun. What do they call They had a name for that back in gray 17 is missing where they had the thing slug, a slug slugger or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, but are you, but why do they use that particular sort of weapon the PPG? on the station? Mm -hmm. Uh, so it doesn't blow a hole inside of the station. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, you know what we saw a lot of in this episode? A lot of bullets. A lot of PPGs getting blasted through all of the structures in the station. Took down a door. Yeah. Took down the vents. The whole time I'm just like, I thought, that, but I don't. Yeah. I don't understand. I I am almost positive, Jeff, that I remember back when we did the gathering. The very okay. first episode, um, I did a little bit of research on the kind of the behind the scenes. And one of the things that we got from that was the, the things that they changed when they remastered it for TNT mm -hmm. versus the, the P 10. And one of the, one of the things they changed was acknowledging that the PPG was a projectile weapon and not an energy based weapon. Because later on in the show, they made it a projectile weapon, an energy based weapon. Although, as I'm saying this out loud, I may actually have that backwards. They may have said in the gathering that it was a projectile weapon, but through the rest of the show, it's an energy based weapon, and they changed it to turn it to into a, into an energy based weapon. I may have that backwards. Do you know? I, I forget remember off the top of your head. You I forget exactly what PPG stands for, but it's some sort of plasma gun, something plasma gun. Okay. Yeah. So it's plasma, which could be a projectile, projectile right? Plasma like, gun, right? Yeah. And Fallout, you get a plasma weapon and it's a projectile, but it shoots plasma and it uses your energy. Phased, it's skill. a phased plasma gun. There it is. And it fires a bolt of energized, superheated helium sheathed in an electromagnetic field propelled by an opposed magnetic field. Boy, oh boy, does that not sound like. All right. Here's how the holodeck works. It's a hologram, but it's wrapped in these force fields so that you can touch it and do stuff with it. And it looks and feels exactly like the real thing. And you're like, that is the biggest bunch of BS I've ever heard in my life, but good on you for figuring out how to explain it. Yeah, it sure sounds good. It sure, sure. sounds good. Sure. So you made a prediction a long time ago, multiple times, uh -huh. um, very small one that came to fruition in this episode. I did. Yeah. Which the that? little, the little comb badge thing yes. they've got on their wrist. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Garibaldi was like, it keeps pulling my hair. I was, Look, it doesn't even grow back anymore. And I was like, yes, it does. I was like, Brett said that he said that you are a hairy man, Jerry Doyle. <laughs> I, that, I mean, that must have been like uh I, I truly imagine like in real life him putting that on and off his hand every day for work was like a behind the scenes makeup trailer conversation and jms wrote it into the script yeah I, like had to have because it just and it was their own like little nod in in the show like they're like ha 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 do you have anything else either nope i'm 
I'm ready for the next segment whenever you are, brother. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, Brent. Ooh, we've reached that part. Under. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> hey, just so you guys know, YouTube. Uh, can I tell him, Jeff? Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think we've mentioned it in like the last oh, two. Did we? So, okay, yeah. yeah, so before yeah, the show, yeah. Jeff and I set an over-under on how long we think the episode's going to be. Jeff set this one at an hour and seven. Now, that includes all the preamble. That includes anything that may or may not happen after that you would only know if you actually stuck around and didn't bounce out on our show earlier, which is okay if you do. It's just you miss some good stuff at the end. Um, and it incorporates all that. You said an hour seven, and I took the over on this one. Let's let's see what happens. We're, uh, we're yeah, let's see what happens. 45 minutes right now. Let's go, Jeff. All right, Brent, we've reached that part of the show. We're going to boil this all down. We're going to see if this episode has any deep morals, any messages, if it's holding up a mirror to society, any hope will be better in the future. And we're going to see just how Babylon 5, those messages are delivered. Brent, you're going to do that by rating this episode on a scale of zero to five Delta Furies. So lay it on me, brother. Jeff, I'm going to read this exactly as I have it written down in my notes. I got nothing. If this were an actual episode of Star Trek, it would be one of those that we said didn't have much of a Star Trek message in and of itself. So I'm forced to say that this particular episode was plot, 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 but no messages. And that means no Delta Furies. But wow. I can't leave it there. Because the other question is how uniquely Babylon 5 was this episode. For that... I'm having to make an exception, Jeff, that once we know the entire story, there is going to be a lesson and we won't be able to get that lesson at the end without having everything that's happening here. And we will understand it then. And so on the basis of that assumption alone, despite last week, having said, I'm just going to try to take these episode by episode, I'm actually going to reach back into our past into our old bag of rating systems. And I'm going to pull out two star furies because I did enjoy this episode and it certainly was Babylon five. That's what I have written there. However, over the course of our conversation tonight, Jeff, you have reminded me of something that I did forget about. It's easy to come together for a common enemy, but now we have to come together for a common goal. That's so good. That's yeah. a line to pull out and put in the book of Star Trek messages. And it's so true. One of the interesting things about the Star Trek thing, the, the history of Star Trek was the world had just come through world war three. The world earth was pretty well decimated. It was not a great place to be. We kind of blasted ourselves back to the stone age, not, not quite the stone age, but we weren't doing great. And then we met the Vulcans. They came in first contact, right? And when we realized that we weren't alone, that united humanity. Well, what was it about that that united humanity? That we realized that there's something bigger than ourselves out there. And now we just had the fuzzy, warm feelings that, hey, we get to do this. No, really, it was more like, hey, we're, we have a bigger enemy out there that we need to like, get our crap together for is I, kind of the way that I get it. And eventually it evolved into something bigger and better, but they're absolutely right. It is easy to come together for a common enemy. I think one of the things we see in the world out there, and this is a huge, this should be a huge red flag. Everybody should see this and call it out for exactly what it is. Whenever you see it. If, if a politician, gosh, this is two weeks in a row. If a politician, can make them the enemy and rally people to an enemy. If they can, if he can give or she can give the people that they want voting for them an enemy to rally against. It's what Hitler did with the, with the Jews. It's what Charlemagne did way back. It's uh, with, um, um, it's the reason he made Christianity, the, the, the state religion, it, it the Muslims, I think I, I forget my history or was it the bar, like the barbarian? Barbari yeah, it's, it was something I, yeah. I, I forget my history with what it was, but if you can unite people around that enemy, it will bring people together to do it in a better way though. We're not going to unite around an enemy. We're going to unite around a common goal. 
that that is beautiful so for that as this was just sort of a throwaway piece again i still think it might be part of a larger thing that we'll notice when we come back i'm actually going to give this one one delta fury that's, yeah, that's fair that's what i was gonna i was gonna come in and stump on was yeah. like this line it's great and it, it it is it's a line in in a moment in this one that should pay off down down the line so couldn't argue with you if i wanted to but i don't even want to <laughs> Well, Jeff, with that, uh, we are creating the absolute 100% completely accurate and definitive ranking of the fourth season of Babylon 5. Now, Jeff, it is your job this week to place conflicts of interest inside of our rating system. We have our top 11. The question is now, which episode gets pushed out of the top 11? Or is this one the one that's going to be the one hanging out? Our current top five, though, just to recap for the folks out there at home, Into the Fire, The Long Night atonement whatever happened to mr garibaldi and number five is the summoning jeff does this episode crack the top five for you if so if not where does it go does not it does not crack the top five and i think this is like my chance to put my and maybe our money where our mouth is where like we, i don't think we sounded super excited about this episode yep. today we didn't have a lot to talk about but this was a good episode sure. like there was good stuff in here this was a better episode than the illusion of truth. This was not a better episode than the hour of the wolf. I'm going to make this our new number seven. Sounds good. One of the games that we love playing here on, uh, wait. Oh, and that's it for conflicts of interest. One of the things we love to do on Babylon 5 for the first time is play our games. And one of the favorite games that we play is where we guess what the next episode is going to be about based on the title alone. Next week, we're watching Rumors, Bargains, and Lies for the first time. I'm sorry, what was that name? Rumors, Bargains, and Lies. We haven't seen anything about this. No thumbnails. That's a no very nothing. long name. Very, and very, rumors, bargains, and lies. Yes. Okay. Rumors, bargains, and lies. Brent, what do you think, based on that alone, do you think the next episode's going to be about? I got it. I know it. I'm laying okay. claim to the crown once again. You know what this is, Jeff? Hmm. This is Babylon 5's In the Pale Moonlight. What? This is absolutely Sheridan doing something super shady. Because remember, he had that conversation with Londo and Jakar, right? He's doing something super shady to bring more people into this alliance that he is forming. He talked about those raiders at the League of Non-Aligned Worlds. We've already seen him have to bring the League of Non-Aligned Worlds in for the whole Vorlon Shadow thing, and then whatever, so he's got to bring them back. He is going to do something. This is him being bad. And is he going to have some like Centauri killed or something? I have no idea. Like, is that I, almost I, 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 I'm not going to speculate that far, but I'm going to leave it with Sher Sheridan is going full Ben Cisco on this one. And he is going to do something bad for the purpose. I, Cause I think it's in the pale moonlight for the purpose of bringing these other people in because Sheridan is clearly amassing a new alliance of folks to stand against earth. And there's also this drach and, and all this other stuff. So I think he's going to do something to bring these folks together. But I think it's going to be a little shy. I think Sheridan's going to get his hands dirty in this one. And I really hope it involves him sending Londo and Jakar out on like a little buddy cop mission. I really hope that it involves that. But I don't know that it does. A buddy cop guess. mission between two buddies that want to kill each other. Uh, that, Jeff, how awesome is that? I know, right? That sounds yeah, I'm, like I, good TV to me. I'm loving this idea. I'm trying to think like, you know, because the thing in, a pale, in the pale moonlight was Cisco knew and he went along and whatever, but Garrick, Garrick is the guy who did the, did the stuff. Uh -huh. I'm trying to think who Sheridan is going to like try and partner with to make this happen. And Long my gut tells me, okay, okay. I mean, that's the buddy cop thing. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Wow. Yeah. 
and it'll all be for the greater good. And you know what, what it means when somebody says it's for the greater good, it's never good. Or the bad guy. Yeah. This is, this is Sheridan playing the anti-hero for an episode. And it wouldn't surprise me, Jeff, to know that this episode actually came out after the pale moonlight in the pale moonlight. And when we look at this episode, just sit back and go, actually this one, like I love in the pale moonlight. So yeah. it might be better if it's where I think it's going. It could be. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Oh man. Now you, that's like, for example, you haven't given your deal yet. What do you think? I haven't yet. Cause I'm, I'm like, I'm buying into yours, but the first thing I want to look at is I want to look at those air dates before I even watch. I just want to look at the air dates and be like, how do these things line up? I'm looking right now just because I want to know. It, okay. It's not a spoiler to look at air dates. Is it? Well, here, I can tell you this. Conflicts of interest was May 5th, 1997. Okay. Rumors, bargains, and lies was May 12th. You keep going, Jeff. Say what you want to say. Oh, no, I'm going to let you look. I'll edit this. Okay. In the Pale Moonlight was... Uh, oh, no. In the Pale Moonlight was April 13th, 1998. So it was almost a full year. In the Pale Moonlight was almost a full year after Babylon 5. Oh, my gosh. If they did this show and then ba Deep Space Nine literally stole the idea. And this, this is one this of is the, the things smoking. people are talking about. <gasps> yeah. This is the smoking gun. Or, no, or it's, it's back to that. Oh, you guys are going to do that? That's cute. Watch what we do. And we're going to one-up it. Oh my gosh, I hope this is what the episode is. I know, I do too. Like, I want to go watch it right now just to see if that's what it oh is. Oh my gosh. So my uh, mine seems so boring now in comparison because my whole thought was, you know what episode we recently heard the term rumors a whole lot in recently? Last week. Mm. Rumors of the Warrior cast doing this. So I, I felt like this is going to be Delenn on Minbar doing the politics stuff, right? Going addressing the yep, rumors, yep. making bargains, dealing with and probably making lies. Because I think what she's going to be doing is going on to try and establish herself as a person of power and influence the Minbar on Minbar. Delenn's not a pure Minbari, or she's the most pure Minbari. Depending on who you ask, she's the only one who will tell you that. Is it going to be, um, is there going to be a B plot with something that's happening with Earth that's going to somehow mirror what's happening with Delenn on Minbar? Ooh, probably. probably. Although I think it was a B plot, it's probably going to be the Garibaldi stuff. And and not around his programming, but around him and Edgar. And sure. And Demar. Because we're just going to yeah. slow roll the whole Garibaldi programming stuff. Oh my gosh, Jeff, if we drop Garibaldi's programming and this is just where we go, I'm going to be mad at all of you out there. You say yeah. that nothing's wasted. I will write some letters. They will be very sternly worded. I prom I, I'm serious. And then send them to the past. Yeah, I will. To tell them off. <laughs> We've done it before. We've gone to the past. We, yeah, you know, we can make it happen. It's the show from the future. Oh, gosh. I'm excited for this next episode. We're going to find out exactly what happens next week. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here. Please rate, subscribe review, do all the things that everyone always tells you to do at the end of a podcast. The one thing I'm going to ask that you do it, I've asked for the last couple of weeks, but it's very specific and we're asking this for a very good reason. And that's to hit the share button on YouTube, Apple podcasts, Spotify, good pods, overcast, Google podcast, Stitcher, you name it, wherever you're audible, wherever you're listening, hit the share button and send this to somebody who loves Babylon five or is about to fall in love with Babylon 5, and they just don't know it. So, Brent, until next time. Hey, Jeff. That, listen, Brent, I, look, I do not have, I do not have the time for your oh. sh I just don't. Oh, but Jeff, no, 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 no. You, you, you must be thinking of Brent. You see, I am Brent, not Brent. There, there's two of you? Oh, no, no, no. There are 10 of us. We are all Brent. You see, it's slight variation in how you say the name. You see, there's there's Brent, and then there's Brent, and Brent, and then there's Brent, and then Brent, and then there's Brent, and Brent, and then Brent, and there's <laughs> you gotta cut me off. Okay. I'm gonna see how long you can go. <laughs> there's, there's Brent and Brent and Brent. Oh my God! In, Va in Valen's name. I mean, we're not some some deep space franchise. This station is about something. And then there's Brent.
and Brent and Brent and then Brent and Brent and Brent and Brent. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that that happened. I, you know, the best part is I wasn't going to cut you off until two, one. Now I was going to let that go for a solid 60 seconds. I was way past 10 brother. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? Just jump in. It was here. fun. It was fun. <laughs> oh. Hey, Club 65, what's going on? <sighs> kind of I kind of like that one. I kind of I kind of like that particular ending. That's good. That was fun. Hey Jeff, I noticed uh something special you're wearing over there, pal. Yeah. Look at you. We've been seeing these over the past gosh, couple couple months it's now. been neat yeah yeah it's been fun seeing yeah. seeing you guys out there uh wearing the club 65 or at least like shooting us pictures of it and things like that mm -hmm. um you know and if anybody's new to club 65 you want to get your gear you can do that at that link way down in the in the corner um it's been a while since we've talked about that right so yeah. it's there it's a case sensitive link we don't ever put the link anywhere you got to type that in if you know what club 65 is you know if you don't you don't and we don't talk about we don't it tell people what it 65. is until you get into nope. club 65 which is where you are right now um and so you guys can just do that and all we ask is you guys drop a 65 down in the comments let us know that you were here just so you guys know the gear that that's down there at that link uh jeff and i have literally said it at the base level that you can we set it as low as you can jeff and i get no money out of that it Nothing. is literally just covering the cost of is it Teespring or one of the whatever company? Yeah, I think it's it's whatever they charge to make the dang shirt or not sure. You can get a coffee mug, you get a face mask, you probably get a fanny pack if you want a fanny pack. I love um, fanny packs. I, I, yes, I bet you do. I had a designer fanny pack actually oh, for yes. the longest time. I'm sure you do. There's a pretty epic picture I took years ago. It's out on my Twitter. I think it's on my Instagram too. But you know, there's that picture of The Rock where like he's got like a turtleneck on oh, yeah. a little silver chain and he's, he's got, got his hair. fanny pack on yeah. yep. yep i did uh i did a jeff aiken version of that what? except i wasn't wearing a silver necklace i was wearing my work badge uh black turtleneck and then my cool fanny pack you still had hair i did have some hair <laughs> yeah not as, I, still st not as much as the rock but i mean really you look at that picture and you're like i can't even tell these two people apart yeah it's look exactly the same have you have you ever looked at old pictures of the rock and then look at pictures of the rock now and you're like that is not the same man i know there's yeah. no way that's the same man yeah i like the rock i actually i really enjoy pretty much everything he's in and do you know for years now he has been hollywood's highest paid actor yeah like they throw him in a movie and he reaps so much money and well, the movie unless it's flies a like the movie just blasts off unless it's a dc movie and then uh he literally destroys an entire cinematic universe no that was happening way before he had anything to do with it yeah that's true so but yeah you know i uh in 2017 i think it was 2018 the rock put together an exploratory committee and was con considering running for president of the united states i would have voted for him i, I, I probably would have voted for him yeah given the options we had uh, can you, 100 percent. can you imagine the rock rolling into the u.n like, listen here, your candy ass. <laughs> Finally, The Rock has come back to the United Nations. <laughs> Putin says he's like, now let's just a minute here. I think it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> We'd be living in a much different world oh if gosh. that if that if, had listen, happened. If nothing else, listen, World War Three may be on, but at least it would be more entertaining. Totally. There'd be promos. They'd be electrifying, right? <laughs> the most electrifying president ever in sports entertainment, in American history. Oh my gosh! I sports would. Entertainment. I would one hundred percent vote for the Rock. You know who else I would vote for president if they ever ran? Dennis Haysbert. Really? You know who Dennis Haysbert is? I have no clue. <laughs> You're like, really? That guy? I mean, you would do that? Well, you're gonna vote for somebody that? Uh, yeah. Did you ever see the show Twenty Four? I never watched it. Jeff, dude, this is a for the first time we're going to make happen, dude. Oh, but you've never well, watched get, 24. 
Never. I've yeah. never seen a single episode. Dennis Haysbert played. Uh, well, he started as a presidential candidate, but eventually became president. Uh, based on the strength of his performance as an actor of being a president, I would vote for him to be a president. Hundred percent. Yeah, sure. He is. What? He was so good. Jeff, do not watch this show. It. it we are recording it. This is a future. This is like after Stargate for the first time. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah this I know this guy. Also, he was in a fantastic show called The Unit, mm -hmm. which was amazing about about Delta Force Squad. Uh Jeff, we have 90 seconds to get out of here before we take the over. <laughs> I'm, I'm ready to I go. want the under. I want to be wrong on this one. I want to I want to hit under. You said an hour 7. Well, you know, 24 could be what I do for one of my first time reactions on the YouTube. I like it. I like we it. We could do that too. But I oh, hey, Jeff, I kind of want to do it. But you want to talk through it? <sighs> You know what? You know what? Because twenty four, the it's set up in real time. Each yeah. season has twenty four episodes, and each one is an hour of a day. So mm -hmm. hyper serialized. Watch a season, and then we'll do an episode on each season. Okay. Yeah. We should yeah. Do it that way. That's all. That all right. Work. Watch for it here. There you go. All right. We're gonna get out of here. Club sixty five. You guys are awesome. You guys are great. Please like, subscribe, show sixty five down on the bottom. Get your gear down there, and uh, we'll see you guys next week when Sheridan is up to some shenanigans. I'm calling it. We shall see. All right, bye guys.